the contentious race to finish the genome came to an end. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. And the winner was... Well, you probably heard, they decided to call it a tie. So, Dr. Collins, please come up. President Clinton himself got the public guys and the Solera guys to play nice, shake hands, and share credit for sequencing the genome. Nearly two centuries ago, in this room, on this floor, Thomas Jefferson and a trusted aide spread out a magnificent map. The aide was Meriwether Lewis, and the map was the product of his courageous expedition across the American frontier all the way to the Pacific. Today, the world is joining us here in the East Room to behold a map of even greater significance. We are here to celebrate the completion of the first survey of the entire human genome. Without a doubt, this is the most important, most wondrous map ever produced by humankind. There are really gene-dense regions that might have 15 times the density of genes. Sort of New York City over here. And there are other regions that might go for two million letters, and there's not a gene to be found in there. It is a little humbling to think that we, the paragon of animals, the architects of great civilizations, are used as taxicabs by a bunch of freeloading parasites who could care less about us, but that's the mystery of it all. You come away from reading the genome recognizing that we are so similar to every other living thing on this planet. And every innovation in us, we didn't really invent it. These were all things inherited from our ancestors. This gives you a tremendous respect for life. It gives you respect for the complexity of life, the innovation of life, and the tremendous connectivity amongst all life on the planet.